Hey guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits, and inside this video tutorial, we are going to look at nailing skin tones inside Lightroom. The tips and tricks I wish people had told me when I was first starting off in my editing journey. All right, so we're going to look at those as well as the comparison and reference tool in Lightroom, which is super, super handy and will help you in getting better edits and improving your editing overall. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, so this tutorial was brought to you by Renee McDaniel, who reached out to me and said, Hey Ryan, my number one editing issue right now is understanding how to nail skin tones. And I can totally relate to that because when I first started out in photography, it was so hard to figure out how to get skin tones looking the way I wanted. There were photographers whose work I loved, but no matter what I did, my photos just didn't look like theirs. I couldn't seem to get it right in the editing. And while it does come down to a few tricks and tips we're going to look at in the editing, a lot of it also has to do with the photos you take in camera and how you go about capturing skin tones in camera. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to dive in, walk through this step by step, and give you a lot of tools and strategies that I wish I had known myself when it comes to getting better skin tones and really upping your editing inside of Lightroom, okay? So we're going to start off by heading to Pinterest. And I'm going to look at a board here that I've got in my Pinterest account. And I've created it. It's called Couples Poses. We've got 2,000 pins of just different inspiration for people who photograph couples, weddings, engagements, whatever it is. Um, and you can just kind of browse through here and take a look and get some inspiration when it comes to posing, when it comes to editing, when it comes to skin tones in particular. So that's what we're going to look for today is we're going to look at these photos and kind of dissect them, see what's going on here, what is giving these skin tones the look that they have, kind of what can we figure out without actually seeing this person edit this photo, what clues does the edit leave behind? And as I scroll through here, you'll notice one common thing, and this is point number one when it comes to getting great skin tones in your photo edits, is the lighting. So as we scroll through, you'll notice something that most of these photos have in common, probably 90% of them were taken with backlight close to sunset at a really nice time of day. So we've got really, really soft, beautiful, saturated light happening. So if we look, we've got a backlit photo, backlit photo. This one's frontlit, but probably on a cloudy day. So the photos that aren't backlit, we have really nice cloudy lighting. Backlit around sunset, backlit. And how do you know if a photo is backlit? Well, it's easy to tell if you look for kind of the halo and the ring behind your subject. So you see around her hat, it's kind of this white kind of area. Around his head, it's kind of brighter right around here. We've got kind of this halo effect happening. That shows us that the photo was backlit. Another way to do that and figure out what kind of lighting was used Let's exit out of that, is to look for shadows. So if we look for the shadows in the photo, you can tell two things. One, if the shadows are long, it means if the photo was taken when the sun was lower in the sky. So for example, if we look at this photo and we look at the shadows on the ground behind them, you can see how long these shadows are. That shows us that the sun was really low in the sky behind them when this photo was taken. The other thing we can look for is the harshness of the shadows. How easy is it to even spot the shadows? Because if we can't see the shadows, it means the light was very, very soft. So if I scroll up here, you can see long shadows or no shadows. And no shadows means that it was probably a really overcast day. And because of that, the light is very soft, very flattering, looks very good in portraits. So if we scroll down here, you can see underneath them, we do have longer shadows to begin with, so it was taken around sunset anyways, but it was probably a partially cloudy sunset because these shadows are very, very subtle. And the more subtle they are, the softer that light must have been. So that's kind of a clue we can find when all of these photos, we look at all of these edits, they were all taken with really beautiful lighting conditions. That's point number one to getting great skin tones. You need great lighting in camera. I can't stress this out enough. If you have photos that were taken in the middle of the afternoon and you try and take a photo and edit it to look like this photo that was taken at sunset, you will never get there. You will never get these skin tones. You will never get that look if your lighting conditions were totally different, right? So you need to have those ingredients in the photo to begin with. It's like baking a cake and trying to make a good cake without having any sugar. It's not going to happen. You're going to wind up with, I guess, bread. No matter how hard you try, you can't turn that thing into cake if there weren't the right ingredients to begin with. All right, so that's point number one. Now, point number two that we need to ob um, kind of observe in here is the natural skin tones of our subjects. So if we look at uh, some of these photos, you'll see we have darker skin tones and we have lighter skin tones. That's not always just an editing style thing. We do have a limit when it comes to the natural complexion of your subject. So if they're naturally more tan, it's going to be way easier to get that kind of saturated skin tone look because there's more saturation naturally in their skin. However, if they're very white and pale and it's a bright day, you're going to have a harder time actually getting the saturation there. So for instance, we've got this photo here taken with a nice window right beside it, very soft light, and you're going to get really nice saturated tones out of that. Whereas if you're taking photos of a pale couple outside, much harsher lighting going on here, it's going to be way harder to get that same kind of look. 
All right, so we've got lighting in the photo and the subject's natural skin tone. Those are both going to make a huge difference when it comes to actually getting that look. Now we're going to grab some of these skin tones as examples. I'm just going to take a few screenshots here of kind of skin that I like the look of. Maybe one of these. This is more popular right now is the more saturated skin. And then you've got more natural, more desaturated skin. We'll show you how to kind of get both of these looks and how you can tweak it in camera. This one, this skin is more green. If we compare these two side by side, obviously a very green. You can do that in the HSL panel. And then we've got more red skin. This is partially because it was sunset, so we've got redder tones overall, warmer tones. And so you're going to have a way easier time getting this look if you were taking it around sunset or somewhere where the light was naturally warm. Like, for instance, on a Ferris wheel, we've got really nice warm uh, lights. So this photo was taken by India Earl. I want you to notice something about her photos. So we're actually going to just search for India Earl. Look at all the photos she's got. She does beautiful work. But you'll notice that they're very consistent in their look and feel, but not entirely matching. And the reason for that is because different lighting, it doesn't matter kind of how good a photographer or editor you are. If you've got a completely different lighting condition, you can't not match two weddings to each other. Let's say one was raining and one was totally sunny. The look won't be the same. It will be different. So you need to realize that the lighting and the skin tones of your subject is going to affect things. So let's jump over into Lightroom and let's actually get started with editing because I think I have driven that point home. I've got a few kind of example skin tone photos that I've already imported. These ones are already edited photos just based around some of the more popular looks out there. And the first thing I'm going to show you that I wish people had shown me when it comes to editing in Lightroom is the reference tool that comes inside. So what we're going to do is we've imported these photos. We're going to grab a photo that we want to kind of emulate the look of. So let's say that we like the look of this photo right here. Okay, I'm going to grab it, right click, and go here where it says set as reference photo. Perfect. Now we're going to grab a photo that we think kind of matches the look and feel of this photo. And that's important because if you want to get this look and feel in your edit, you need to start with a photo that's actually more similar to this. You can't start with a photo that is a totally different lighting situation like this one. I could try, I could go over to my develop module, and then to pull up this reference photo, we're going to hit this RA button right here. If you don't have this toolbar at the bottom of your panel, just hit T and it should pop up for you. And now what we can do is we can actually reference and as we're editing, we'll warm things up, maybe add some magenta, take our contrast down, highlights down, whites down, shadows up, blacks up. And I'm just messing around here. It's not something that you need to follow. My whole point is that we can kind of match things and get our skin looking better but I'm not going to be able to ever match it perfectly because the lighting is so different. The natural tones and the ingredients in this photo are totally different. So we're never going to be able to get that kind of sunsetty, beautiful, moody look. It's just not going to happen with the blue sky in behind us, okay? Whereas if I were to take a photo that was actually more similar in style and lighting conditions, so let's grab this one instead, and I pull up my reference photo, hitting this RA button. Oh, of course, let's reset this, go to set as reference photo. Okay, develop, pull up that reference once more. Now we'll have a way better chance because you can see that the lighting situation is very similar. This one is backlit on the side of their faces. This one is backlit on the side of their faces where it's a similar time of day, it's sunset, sunset. Okay, now we have a shot. So first we're going to warm this up. You can see just by adjusting the white balance there, I'm pretty close to the look already. Obviously this photo is very low resolution and has been adjusted more than that, but you can see how close the tones are just with one simple change, just adjusting that white balance and getting it dialed in properly. The natural ingredients in this photo are the same as this one, so it's going to be so much easier to get that look. So that's one thing I wish, the most important thing I wish that people had told me when I was first starting out was to get better edits in Lightroom. The first thing you need to focus on is better photos in camera. Getting those ingredients right in camera allows you to enhance what is already there in the image rather than trying to kind of add stuff in that was never there to begin with. Okay, so that was point number one. The second thing that we're going to look at is going to be uh, kind of some practical things when it comes to actually editing our photos in Lightroom. So the first thing that adjusts our skin tones obviously is going to be our white balance. This is the most important thing when it comes to actually getting skin tones right is getting our white balance right. You can see what a massive difference that is before and after. Reset. And just watch for the skin. See how much it's changing. Obviously, we're warming things up, but it's more than that. It actually determines so many different things and can go from a photo that just looks and feels really funny to be really, really quite nice. So let's take a more extreme example here. I'm going to jump over to this photo. And from the bat, it looks very odd, very strange. Part of that is the pose and the lens that was used is a very wide angle lens. But really, the main thing that makes this photo feel off and strange and not right is the skin. 
you can see if we zoom in, it's very blue. It's not skin colored at all. So we'll start by adjusting our white balance, we'll warm things up, maybe to around there. And it's very green because the light was actually hitting this hill, reflecting onto our skin, and adding a green tinge. So we're going to get rid of that. OK, let's look at before and after. Isn't that wild? Just white balance is going to make the biggest difference when it comes to your skin tone. So make sure you get that right. And if you need help getting that right, that's where the reference view can be very, very helpful. So if I grab my photo, we'll grab one that's pretty similar in terms of kind of potential here. And of course, none of these are really lined up with what this one was, which is an outdoor overcast day. But let's say that this one was similar. We grab it, we go to set as reference photo. Where are we? Right there. Head over to the develop module, pull up our reference tool. And then we can try and kind of match things in. That can be the easiest way to edit because as you're editing and first starting out, first learning, kind of the, getting the hang of these things, it can be really, really hard to just know what a photo should look like. Having something right beside you to reference back and forth will help you get more, more accurate settings when it comes to setting these things up. Okay, so we've talked about white balance. That's point number one inside of Lightroom. The second thing that adjusts your skin tones is the HSL panel. So we're going to scroll down here. If you've never used this HSL panel before, well, you can watch our full HSL tutorial that I made on YouTube a couple of months ago. It's much more detailed than we're going to go into today, but we have our hue, our saturation, and our luminance. Now, skin tones, this is what you need to remember about this. Skin tones are generally found in the reds and the oranges. That's it. Every other thing inside of Lightroom, we can generally change and kind of mess with. We'll take the saturation all the way up. Let's take the luminance all the way down across all these different colors. You'll see things are changing. But the skin tones, in general, look perfectly normal. They haven't really been adjusted at all. Whereas if we adjust our reds and our oranges, that's going to make all the difference. So if I take my hue and we take our oranges, in particular, is the most powerful part of the kind of skin tone equation. We can make them more green. We can make them more red. All sorts of things. So I'm going to start off by just kind of referencing this photo right here. I'm going to start by kind of getting the overall tint right and then the luminance right. So in this particular photo, the photographer has taken the luminance down on the skin to make the skin appear more tanned. So that's the thing about tan skin. When you think about it, tan skin is just darker skin. It's also more saturated and more orange, but in, in general, lighter skin is just whiter. So we're going to take our luminance down in our oranges, maybe take our saturation up just a little bit, and you'll see what a big difference that makes between before and after. Now, obviously, we'll still need to add some contrast back in here and probably dial back on my other adjustments because I went a little crazy on all of this, just to demonstrate a point. But you'll see we've added some uh, real tannedness and some, some more characters, some more color to her skin. We can also take our reds here, maybe make it a little bit more red because she is more magenta, probably in this example photo. You can just dial it in like that. So that's the next thing when it comes to actually getting skin right is the HSL panel. We'll go through a couple other photos together. But first, I want to show you the last tool that really affects skin in a major way is our camera calibration section here. Now, camera calibration is going to affect everything about your images, but you can use it to tweak the skin tone. So I'm going to show you, without going into detail too much about what it does, we can affect different things in the shadows in our reds, in our greens, and our blues. Now, if you really want to know kind of why it's red, green, and blue instead of red, yellow, and blue, you can check out our tone curve tutorial. I'll make a link here. But we can dial in our skin tones and get them wherever we want to get them, oftentimes using our calibration. Now the thing is that Adobe doesn't really have a lot of documentation when it comes to explaining how all of this works. When it comes to the camera calibration, to be honest, I kind of experiment more than not. It's not really a set science of, oh, do this, do this, do this. It just depends. In general, I find that if you take your blues down towards the kind of aqua, aqua tealy kind of color, you'll get more of that kind of teal and orange look in your skin. But it really depends on the specific photo. Some photos you'll need to take it up the other way. So just experiment with that. So here's before and here's after. Just made some slight changes. We kind of took some saturation out of the background, which makes her skin pop a little bit more. We could even add some saturation to her skin if we wanted to. Now, obviously, this might be too far. This isn't my ex example of the perfect edit. It's really just showing you how we can adjust our skin tones. Here's before and here's after. A pretty radical difference, right? OK, let's go through a few more photo examples together. So first off, I'm going to grab this guy. 
then we're going to go over to the develop module and just walk through the same things that we did before. So the first thing that I said, the most important thing when it comes to setting your skin tones and getting them correct is the white balance. So you'll see how much, just watch her skin. Don't watch anything else in the image. Obviously everything is going to change, but her skin tone radically changes with the white balance. So we need to make sure we nail that first. Add some magenta maybe. Perfect, just like that. And then we're going to go down here to our HSL panel next. We can start by maybe taking our hue, adjusting these yellows. We can either make them more green because we warmed everything up. And so if we want to kind of counteract that, still get green grass, we can do that. Or we can take our hue the other way, warm everything up and go for more of a monochromatic feel. We could take our purples and our reds, something like that. That's an option as well. Just different things, but obviously we're not affecting the skin tones so much in that. But if we take our saturation up in the oranges, we will affect the skin in a massive way. Likewise, if we take the saturation down, we'll do the same thing. So it really just depends on the look you're going for. If you're going for more of a natural look, what I tend to do is I'll bump the luminance up a little bit on the oranges and the reds, and then I'll drop the saturation slightly in the oranges and the reds. And most of the time, I will take my hue, and I'll take it slightly towards green in my oranges and slightly towards kind of the green in the reds. And that's just going to counteract if I'm shooting with a Canon camera. I find in general it tends to be too red, but that really is going to depend on your camera. So here's before and after. Massive change. Obviously we've desaturated the skin. If we wanted to, we could saturate it instead and kind of take the other route. We could darken it instead of lighten it. Brighten everything else maybe so it pops a bit more. And shift our yellows to green so the skin stands out. Maybe something like that. Desaturate our yellows. And sometimes, watch this, so if we've got our saturation up on the yellows, we take it down, you'll see how much more saturated the skin looks, even though we haven't touched the skin. All we've done is made the areas around it less saturated, and our skin naturally looks more saturated. So sometimes if you want your skin to have more of that saturated feel, it really can come from desaturating everything else. One other method that a lot of popular presets out there use, we'll just reset everything going on here. Bam, bam, bam. One other popular method that presets use is they'll take their saturation down or their vibrance down quite a bit. So not all the way to black and white, but almost all the way. Now we've desaturated everything and we just add saturation selectively where we want it. So basically back into the skin because we want that to look normal. So here's our photo before and after. You can see how that skin, even though it's not super oversaturated, it pops out a lot more because everything else is less saturated. So that's one more technique that you can use. Let's go to another example photo. Let's grab, say, this one right here. Okay, so we're going to start off this one with the cali camera calibration instead. So I'm going to show you just what's possible with nothing but the camera calibration. We can add some magenta to the skin right away because you can see everything is a little bit green. And whenever you're shooting outside and you're surrounded by green, you have to remember that your skin tones are going to have some of that green cast in them. That's just a reality. And if you look at photos by photographers like India Earl or these example photos, one thing that's kind of funny that most people don't pick up on is most of the time the reason the skin tones look so nice and beautiful and warm and um, all of those good things is because if you actually think about what's in this image, we've got gray cliff and brown grass and brown desert. So obviously our skin is going to be so much more warm naturally because the light that's bouncing off all of these things is naturally warm. Whereas if we have a photo that's taken outside in the green grass or inside where you've got more blues, we've obviously got blue light coming from out of this window you're going to have more blue skin tones. It's going to be cooler. So this is, again, right by a lake, you're going to have a lot of magenta, a lot of blues coming up on the skin. So part of what's going to happen in your editing is going to just revolve around what was naturally in the photo to begin with. We talked about that already. This photo here, we've obviously got a really deserty background. And I realized this in a major way when I moved to L.A., and I started taking photos here, and I realized, man, my photos are just so much better. And it wasn't that I was necessarily getting better as a photographer, although I hope I was. A lot of it is because in L.A., you've got desert everywhere. And so when you're doing a desert photo shoot, your skin tones are so much easier because you don't have these green reflections coming up and kind of just adding a green cast to everything. So this situation, we've got nice yellow dead grass that's going to be way, way easier and better than had we been shooting somewhere else. Um... On, on a green lawn, for example, or under some green trees. You're going to have to kind of work a lot harder to get nice skin tones. So look at this one by contrast. A lot more magenta skin tones right now because we're trying to counteract the green that's going on in this field. 
So there's a little thing. You gotta be wary of kind of the cast of the color from your photos. Let's jump back over here, getting on a bit of a tangent, and we'll head over to another example image. So this one that we were working on, we've got our green cast. So we're gonna take our shadows, take that up, and kind of get rid of it a little bit. Now we're gonna take our reds, we can take that maybe a little bit this way. Take our saturation up to add some saturation to the skin. Now remember this photo is very raw. That's why it still looks, you know, straight out of camera. All we've done is just change the calibration. Everything else is stock. We're going to take our greens, maybe warm them up instead of adding more green. Take the saturation of those greens down a little bit. Maybe take our hue. Now this is where you'll see you can make that, that teal and orange look comes really just by taking your blues, taking that hue all the way down. We won't go too crazy on that, but if you want to, that's how you do it. Okay, something like that. And you can see the difference in the skin before and after. Massive difference. We've added a lot of color. We've kind of counteracted the greenish, magenta, yucky hue in there. Made things a lot more poppy and just saturated. And then we could go through. And of course, if I were using an actual preset, there'd be a lot more going on here. This is just for the sake of this demonstration. Don't judge me as this is not necessarily my idea of the perfect edit. It is simply just showing you what's possible. So we take our HSL panel here. Generally, we can take the saturation down in everything, except for the skin tones, if we really want the skin tones to pop. Or we can go with a more kind of natural approach, take the saturation down in everything in our skin tones, leave it in everything else. I will say that most of the time, if you've got you know crazy blues going on, you should desaturate those. Um, most of the time, I will take saturation out of the yellows, no matter what. I find that yellows in cameras just tend to be so yucky and gross, and they never look right. So I almost always will get rid of some of the saturation from the yellows. Just a side note there for you. So we're going to take that saturation down, maybe dial these skin tones up a little bit, and then we could brighten the skin. And what that's going to do is as we're actually editing our photos, it'll allow us to take the background and lower the exposure without necessarily making our skin too dark. And this can be helpful because if you have a typical wedding day, which isn't ideal light, in general, you're going to have to deal with, you know, really bright overexposed areas. So you're going to want to darken that background without blowing out, or not blowing out, without making your skin too dark. Just adding a slight luminance bump is going to help with that. Okay. If you want more examples of that, you can look at the full editing tutorials that I've done because I go through full weddings and you'll see every single image, the different steps that I take to approaching that. So different things that we can do with our skin. Oh. That is a weird before. Here's our actual before and after. So you can see we've kept it pretty natural here. Obviously, we could keep tweaking. We haven't done hardly anything when it comes to stylizing the image. Oh, yeah, that's perfect, he said jokingly. But that gives you an idea of different techniques we can use and apply. Okay, now let me show you just a couple more examples here. Remember, you do want to select your photo and kind of decide on your edits based on what's already in the image. We can't do anything that's not already naturally there unless we do some extreme editing and then we're heading into Photoshop doing all sorts of things. We'll try something similar this time. We'll go up. We'll grab our shadows here, make them a little more magenta because we've got all these green trees and green grass, green everywhere, just to counteract that before and after. We're going to grab our reds, make them more towards orange. Maybe take our saturation up in the skin a little bit. We've got our greens. These I definitely want to take and warm them up and desaturate them. Not too, too far. Something like that. And then our blues, we can do that. One more step. Desaturate those. And you can see just the camera calibration. We can make a huge number of changes to our image. Now, things are still looking rather funky here. I'm not saying they look good or natural. And that's part of the reason that having the reference photo can be so helpful. So we could actually go over, grab our reference photo, and make sure we're not taking things too far. But for the sake of this demonstration, hopefully you're following along. I'm basically just adjusting the HSL panel here now. We're lowering kind of the colors that look too bright. So the blues were very, very bright. So I'm going to darken them down. And again, if we want more kind of tan looking skin, we can lower the luminance of the skin. Not too, too far, but a little bit. You can see that versus that. We're just adding a little bit of extra color by doing that at the same time. We can also obviously increase the saturation in the skin just a little bit. And I'm going to show you one last trick that we can do to just add some saturation to skin when maybe it wasn't naturally there to begin with. So let's grab, mm -hmm, hmm. let's grab maybe this image right here. We're going to head over to our develop module and maybe we'll set, oh, I don't know, set this one as a reference image. Go over here, where are you? Set as reference photo. Grab this one, develop, pull up our reference. 
Now, one last thing you can do, if you just can't get the skin to look right, it just, you know, it's lacking color, it's too desaturated, whatever it is, first off, we want to analyze what's going on in the photo. Try and emulate it as best we can so you can see that there is definitely no real black point in this image. See how his hair is just kind of dark gray and kind of fades away? That's because what they did is they went into the tone curve. They did something like this. Not that far, but basically they're clipping the black so that we have no real black point. And they're probably adding some reds and greens at the same time, kind of the same idea. And to do that, all I'm doing is I'm clicking on this tone curve, I'm making a point, and then I'm double clicking on it, and that'll naturally create this kind of clipping layer. So we're going to go to the greens, click once, and then click on the far left little thing here. Perfect. Now this is way, way too far, so we're gonna have to dial it back so it looks more natural. But maybe a little bit closer in terms of the overall feel here. Obviously, our lighting conditions are very different, our actual image and setting very different, so we're not going to get it looking exactly the same. But let's say that I was really having trouble just getting the color right in the skin. One last trick that you can try is we can go to our adjustment brush. We're going to turn on auto mask, and I'm just going to mask on her skin here. Now, this isn't going to be the perfect mask. I'm just demonstrating the process. We're going to go down here to color. And we're going to grab any color we want, and we can add that to her skin if it just isn't naturally in the skin. We want to make it a little bit more orange or red or pink, kind of counteract some different color casts. We can do that. But another way to do this is we can click once on our little color dropper here and drag it right over to our reference photo. And I still haven't let go of the mouse. Once I let go of the mouse, I can actually select anywhere on this image and we can grab the color from that particular skin tone and paste that onto our skin. So that can be very helpful. So we'll grab this right here, and that's the skin. We can take the saturation out of the skin normally with our adjustment brush and just dial in the color like that. So that's an option. Obviously, this doesn't look great, doesn't look perfect, but you can kind of use it in a subtle way to add a little bit of natural color to the skin without making it look way too over-edited. So we'll dial that back here, something like that. So here's before and after just a little bit of extra skin saturation if you want it. That's an operation that you can try. So I hope that this tutorial was helpful for you when it comes to looking at skin tones inside of Lightroom and just different references. The most important thing is having that reference photo beside you when you're starting off to edit can be very, very helpful. And knowing that when it comes to editing, it's not about getting it right afterwards in Lightroom. It's about getting it right in camera. If you want to take photos that look like this and get that kind of an editing look, well, then it needs to look reasonably close to this in camera. The same lighting, the same posing, the same framing, the same lens, the same everything is going to make that way, way easier when you actually take it into Lightroom. As we talked about, it was way easier to get the look out of this photo than it was to get that same kind of look out of this photo. In fact, with this one, it's totally impossible. We can go kind of a certain ways towards it, but we're never going to get this to look like a dark and moody day when it was taken in the middle of the day with super harsh light and a nice blue sky in the background. Just not going to happen. So you need to make sure that you're working on your photography basics, getting those things essentially right in your camera, and then it's going to make the entire editing process so much easier. And then when you actually take it into editing, obviously there are lots of different tools that we can use. We can use our white balance first and foremost, making sure we get that right is going to make 90% of the difference. Then we can do things like emulating different stuff in the tone curve. We can mess with our HSL panel, adding some saturation to our reds and oranges. Remember, that's where the skin is primarily affected. Reds and oranges, we can lower our luminance to make people appear a little more tanned and add some saturation. So there's before and after. Do that really simply. Or we can go the other way around, take some saturation out, raise the luminance up a little bit, and that will allow us to make a darker background without our skin going kind of funky and weird. Now, obviously, that was a little bit too far, and it's going to depend on the photo. But those are two kind of routes you can take, depending on what kind of look you want in the skin. If you want it to look more saturated and tan and orange, and that's kind of the process to do it, is by lowering your luminance, raising your saturation. If you want to look more kind of natural, less saturated, well, then raise the luminance a little bit. Drop the saturation, saturation, the saturation ever so slightly. And then in our hue here, we can just adjust depending on the lighting conditions, depending on what kind of light is coming up in this image. Obviously, this one was taken in the LA area with really dead um, grass underneath, which was orange and brown rather than typical green grass, which would give more of a green color cast. So we don't have to worry about that so much. So I could even maybe take our skin tones more towards green. Whereas if this was shot on a green lawn, well, we'd want to take our hue in the other direction to kind of counteract that. Lastly, we can look at things like our camera calibration to make overall adjustments and kind of get skin tones, um, just unique looks that we really can't get with our HSL panel. But that's going to just be a kind of process of experimentation, and that's why having the reference photo up beside you can be very, very helpful. 
make use of that tool. Super great when it comes to just figuring out editing. And as you do this, the more you do it, the more you mess around, the better it's going to become for you. I wish someone had told me that. It just kind of takes trial and error, getting it right in camera primarily, and then knowing these other areas that really affect um, skin tones in a major way. The white balance, the tint, the hue, saturation, and the calibration as well as just little tricks. Like sometimes it's actually a lot easier to adjust your skin with a local adjustment brush than it is to try and do it globally across all of the all of the image at once, right? We can do all sorts of things to just our skin and leave the background alone, and that can really give us some extra options when it comes to editing, right? So we can do stuff like this. Take down our amount here. Dial back our color without having to affect the rest of the image. So there's another tip for you. So there you have it, my top tips that I wish people had told me when I was first starting out in Lightroom when it comes to nailing those skin tones, using that reference tool, making sure to get great lighting in camera, setting your white balance right, using that HSL panel, and obviously messing around with the camera calibration, all those good things. If this was helpful for you, do me a favor, hit that like button, don't forget to subscribe for more great content, tutorials, and resources, and leave me a comment below. What kind of tips do you have when it comes to editing skin tones and getting those looking pristine? All right, I will see you in the next video. Peace. Thank you